Hi, my name is Johanna Hofmann. I'm from the Pagel Group and I work at the Free University in Berlin, Germany. The instrument we are mostly using in our lab is an eye mobility mass spectrometry instrument, the so-called Synap G2S by Waters. Um, it is now five years old, but it has no special name in our group because our boss believes that once you give it a real name, it starts to make trouble. And so far he's been right. But we are a bit superstitious, so uh, we believe that if you want to get especially good results, you have to wear the color red while measuring. The instrument has a nanoelectrospray ionization source, which allows us to use a very low amount of sample. Um, once you ionize uh, the sample, the ions travel to a quadrupole and afterwards to a ion mobility cell, where the ions are separated according to their mass, charge, size and shape. And at the end of the instrument, we have a time of flight mass analyzer and a detector where we detect the mass to charge ratio and the drift time of each ion. The feature that is especially useful for us is a trap cell prior to the ion mobility cell. So this allows us to either look at the intact ions or produce fragments, which are then separated in the ion mobility cell. Recently, we have also modified our instrument and replaced the traveling wave ion mobility cell with the drift tube. And this allows us now to measure absolute collision cross sections and also to change the drift gas. I'm using the instrument to analyze carbohydrates and I'm especially interested in carbohydrate isomers, which cannot be separated by any other technique. For example, we were able to differentiate two milk sugars uh, within a few seconds and you could not separate them even with a two hour HPLC run. And another example which was very nice was where we had two carbohydrates which only differed in one stereocenter so either it was an alpha or a beta glycosidic bond and we again saw very good separation with eye mobility but the only other technique that could identify them was NMR but of course for NMR you need a lot more sample and the analysis itself takes much longer. At the moment there are three graduate students who work on the instrument as their main source for research, uh, but we also have a variety of undergraduate students and guests who regularly do their experiments there. And this is also what I really like about this instrument, it's very versatile. So you can either use it for simple routine measurements and undergrads can also learn to quickly do measurements on their own. But it's also uh, suitable to do much more complex investigations.